Hello all and welcome back to Random Librarians here on YouTube. Today we are going to be talking about a new year, new book haul kind of deal because I spent New Year's in New York. So I followed the advice of one of my good friends on Bookstagram, Alex from Illiterate Cats who is hilarious and wonderful and you should definitely go follow her. And whenever she goes to a new place, every bookstore that she goes into as a bookstore tourist, she asks the people working there, the booksellers, for their best book of the year. So that's what I did. But I think because I was in New York, I really only got one like full on, here you go, these are the books, this is why I love them, you can take them, go. Uh, a lot of other people were just like, mm, like, just buy a book, I don't know. So I, I cheated a little in a couple places and went and just got the recommended books from the like staff table. But eh, I still, I'm still pleased with what I got. So the first book I, uh, bookstore that I went to is called Housing Works in New York. I posted pictures of this on Bookstagram, which I will include on the screen here. It's a really cool place in that, um, a, it's just beautiful. There's like dueling spiral staircases. They have like a little cafe and it's all used books and everything sold there goes to helping people affected by AIDS and um, I believe it goes not really into like research but I could be incorrect but more into things like housing and support and lots of important things that don't get enough funding as it is. I'll put all the links to the different stores that I went down into the description box so that you guys can all check them out. This is one of those places that I had to grab a book that wasn't the book recommended from the uh, bookseller because the person I was talking to was like, I'm really sorry, but like all of the books that I loved have already been purchased because it is secondhand and they have high turnover of books. Uh, but he had recommended Say Nothing, which I am reading and loving so that's pretty great. <laughs> I'll kind of count that in this video I guess. But the book that I ended up picking up is Purple Hibiscus by Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie whose name I don't know how to say and when I don't know how to say names I tend to put a French spin on them. But <laughs> here we are. This one is um, a story of a family in Nigeria. Uh, the they're wealthy, they're pretty well off, their dad is very controlling, it's a story of the siblings and I believe the mom, and they go away for a little bit and come back kind of energized to fight against what had been the norm before then. Ooh, last line is, uh, Kimbili must find the strength to keep her loved ones together after her mother commits a desperate act. So this sounds amazing. Um, I've been meaning to read something from this author for a really long time. It's kind of insane that I haven't up till this point. Then we have this, which is the Why You Should Read It staff pick. And uh, from either Emoji or Emoj, sorry, uh, says, you must read this because this book was the beginning of CNA's rise to literary stardom, which she deserves, by the way. It tells of a Nigerian family run by the tyrannical father. Their characters are amazingly 3D. You will root for them like they are your closest friends. Which is a great little suggestion there. So I'm really excited for that one. Here we go. After that, I went to the Mysterious Bookshop, which is a really cute, like, one room bookshop that deals exclusively in mysteries. So on the outside they had a little like book cart with decreased prices. So I grabbed this which was an ARC and came out in June of this past year and it's called Her Daughter's Mother which is just a really beautiful cover. <laughs> so I got this I believe for two dollars. Um, because it's an ARC. It's very funny how few people listen to the fact that you're not supposed to resell these. <laughs> this sounds kind of nuts. The main character is Lana Stone and she follows a familiar face through the seats of, streets of New York's Upper West Side um, following the anonymous egg donor that she'd selected through an agency. 
who's making motherhood possible for her and she kind of just wants to know more about this woman um but they kind of accidentally end up becoming friends <laughs> and then Katia goes missing and there's this whole mystery about like finding her Katia's the egg donor so they have this bond uh both through meeting each other and also one through one side of this whole like complicated mess of emotions for motherhood and it just sounds very interesting it's by Daniela Petrova oh she's from Massachusetts but currently lives in New York City as many people do but I'm really excited for this one I think it's going to be um page turner for sure and yeah I don't read too many like thrillers so it should be interesting then the book that the bookseller recommended to me is by Joe Flanagan. It's called Lesser Evils. I have no idea what this is about. He just seemed very excited about it. Um, so that's what I grabbed. Another cool thing about these is that they have this stamp. The Mysterious Bookshop Stamp in New York City. Um, and it's done kind of an old school way. They have their little stamp like ink pad. He had to like really push it in because it's very old and uh, stamped it right on both of my books. So I will always know where I got them from. All right, so we have a returning World War II veteran who becomes a replacement police chief in a quiet Cape Cod town. Okay, you know what? I'm glad I got one book from New York because I wasn't really expecting this one to take place in Cape Cod. <laughs> but that's kind of uh, interesting. Serendipity. Ooh. So basically throughout the day he works as the police chief and then he, after work, he takes care of his son who happens to be disabled. And ooh. There's the life he might have led, which is apparently like echoing back to him, and then a child goes missing, and there's an investigation that is more frightening than any he could have imagined. Desperate to get answered answers before another child dies, Warren will have to confront a criminal conspiracy, a secretive pharmaceutical firm, and an odd local clergyman who may have either a miracle worker or a madman. Oh, this sounds really exciting. Oh, this is a debut novel. Interesting. Okay. So I'm excited to learn more about this one. I haven't spent much time on Cape Cod, but definitely not enough to like know the landmarks that they're going to mention, especially if they're post-World War II landmarks. But it should still be interesting to see like a personality or a character that I would recognize as someone who grew up in Massachusetts to dive into this and kind of feel if it feels familiar and see if it feels real to my state. Anyways, the story also sounds interesting. Um, so thank you, sir. Then I went to Books Are Magic because of course I had to in Brooklyn. So that was a really long walk, like a really, really long walk. The Brooklyn Bridge is an introvert's nightmare. <laughs> I'm like glad I did it and checked it off the bucket list, but wow, that was so many people. And so many people trying to take so many selfies. Would not recommend. <laughs> so while I was there, um, I went to go take a picture with the big books or magic sign, and someone had left a box of books that were free to a good home. So I now have... Silka's Journey by Heather Morris, which is uh, the from the best-selling author of The Tattooist of Auschwitz, which I still haven't read, so it'll be really nice to have this to follow up immediately, even though I imagine I might need a little bit of an emotional break between the two books. It's based on the powerful true love story. No, powerful true story of love and survival. So at least there's that. This came out on October 1st of last year and I'm, yeah, I'm really excited to read it. I've been kind of seeing it everywhere. People really loved The Tattooist of Auschwitz is what I've seen, so I'm happy to be able to read both from this. Then the other book that I grabbed from the freebie box was Night Boat to Tangier by Kevin Barry. I have been meaning to read this one for such a long time, so it just felt really like fate serendipity for me to grab this book from that box. I believe it's from an Irish writer, which as you know, is a huge auto yes for me, but it's also 
uh, just sounds really interesting and like a, a kind of story that will stay with me for a while. So we have in the dark waiting room of the ferry terminal in the sketchy Spanish port of Algeciras, two aging Irishmen, Maurice Hearn and Charlie Redmond, longtime partners in the lucrative and dangerous enterprise of smuggling drugs, sit none too patiently. It is the evening of October 23rd, 2018, and they are expecting Maurice's estranged daughter, Dilly, either to arrive on a boat coming from Tangier or to depart on one heading there. This nocturnal vigil will initiate an extraordinary journey back in time to excavate their shared history of violence, romance, mutual betrayals, and serial exiles, rendered with the dark humor and the hard-boiled Hibernian lyricism that have made Kevin Barry one of the most striking and admired fiction writers at work today. So I, I just, I don't know, I think it's very interesting. And with all the acclaim that books like Say Nothing and movies like The Irishman are getting uh, in this day and age, I think this book will be absolutely amazing. It's already, oh, it was noted by the New York Times as one of the 10 best books of 2019 as well. So I'm really excited for this. I was, you know, gonna put myself on a book then, so I'm glad that I, got this one before I did so, so that I can read it ASAP. So in Books Are Magic, I actually was recommended three very different books. So this should be uh, pretty interesting. I think we have two nonfiction and a fiction. So the first book is A Terrible Thing to Waste, Environmental Racism and Its Assault on the American Mind by Harriet A. Washington. So this is something that I know a little bit about, but I'm excited, not, not excited, excited is the wrong word. I'm very interested in learning more because I know it is a huge problem and disproportionately affects people who can't really advocate for themselves. So I think having the details and knowing the ways that our country kind of Fs over certain people is important for people who, for everyone who's gonna vote, so like everyone, but also for people who maybe have more privilege and are able to use their voices to make things heard, even if it's just within my own family, to be like, hey, things are messed up, and even more so than we thought, and uh, here are some details that broke my heart. The bookseller I spoke to was really, passionate about all three of these books, so I'm very excited to um, kind of get her perspective through the author's perspective. The next one that she gave me was actually a uh, translation from French, so that was pretty interesting um, in that she knew I gave her no details about myself or what I typically read or what I'm interested in, and she pulled uh, Hervé L'Hôtelier from the shelf. So this is All Happy Families and it's a memoir about the author's kind of indifference to his parents. He's, he says that like he wasn't unhappy, his childhood like wasn't deprived, nothing really wrong happened to him, but he doesn't feel like the expected love and like affection that he feels like he's supposed to feel for his parents. And it's just kind of a memoir exploration of that because I think people just expect that the child is going to be like loving and caring and he's taking care of his mother in her old age and has all of these conflicted feelings about it and on the back is <laughs> I just noticed this. On the back it says, So apparently it's scandalous to not love your parents. A child's indifference is forbidden. Children are forever imprisoned by the love they spontaneously feel for their parents, whether the latter are good or cruel, intelligent or stupid, in a word, lovable or not. It's, there's the top part that caught my attention. So, I mean, it should be very interesting. It seems uh, pretty short. Yeah, it's under 200 pages. We have an award-winning... A uh, translator. I really like the cover. It's got that nice uh, soft matte feel, which is always great. And I'm I'm really interested to read this. I think it could be a really interesting point of view, a really interesting 
exploration of someone's life because he's an award-winning author who's written so much so this this is yeah good second pick then the third pick is called faces in the crowd by valeria luiselli i'm gonna say and the bookseller was telling her she's like she was reading this and she didn't really understand it for the vast majority of the book she says that the author is very smart and that she might be too smart for us, um, which is interesting. And I'm not really sure what to make of that, but I'm excited to find out and see what I can get for this. That She said that the, the book has really stayed with her. And then I'm just gonna read the back real quick. So again, I didn't, I didn't wanna like know anything before getting these. I just wanted kind of people's, people's favorite books. So, a young mother in contemporary Mexico City recalls her days as a translator in New York, while in a recent past, a young translator wanders Harlem, seeking out traces of the poet Gilberto Owen. And in 1950s Philadelphia, Owen dreams of New York, and the young woman in a red coat he sees in the windows of passing trains. As the voices of the narrators overlap and merge, they drift into a single stream, a mingling that is also a disappearing act, and an elegiac evocation of loss, love and loss. Valeria Luiselli's debut signals the arrival of a major international writer and an unexpected and necessary voice in contemporary fiction. I can't speak today. In contemporary fiction. So this is another like really short one. I think it's what? Yeah, it's under 150. It's 146 pages. And now that I've read the back, I'm remembering that she said it's like a weird, not weird, but maybe weird merging of past and present and the, like if there's a difference between the two if they're the same thing and um I mean it even just sounds smart from the back uh so this last one is actually a little bit different because it's not from an indie bookstore and it's more um I think it's the book that I saw the most on Bookstagram this past year. Plus it was recently featured in a reading vlog by Paperback Dreams, who's one of my favorite booktubers here on YouTube. So I decided that this I would take as kind of like the people's recommendation before I go on my book buying ban. And that is A Little Life by Hanya Yana Gihara, or something like that, uh, which is very much like a found family slice of life kind of story I want to say it follows four different college students through their lives um, their classmates their best friends they move to New York in search of fame and fortune the story covers decades <laughs> and from what I've seen it makes people very emotional uh, it's also very long and very dense. It is 814 pages. So um, this one might take me a while, but I've just been seeing it too much this year to not include it in a end of 2019, launch into 2020, New Year's book haul. So I had a lot of fun in New York. Uh, I did New Year's there. I ran a road race at midnight into the new year with a friend of mine and it was it was really cool I have you know plenty of kind of thoughts of things that I want to do but I'm not gonna solidify them as resolutions I'm just going to hope that these things that I want to integrate into my life will shape my 2020 uh, if you want to leave your resolutions or feelings for 2020 in the comments. I would love to hear what you're going to be focusing on this year and what books you are planning to read as well. So this might be the last of these for a while. I have another one that I haven't filmed yet, so maybe like one more book buying haul. Uh, but like I said, I need to go on a book buying ban. So Hopefully you'll see more librarian content and more book reviews from me in the near future. 
I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please let me know by hitting the subscribe button down below if you're new or hitting a thumbs up or finding me on bookstagram at random librarians or however else you want to show that you appreciated this. Bye-bye, my friends. I will see you in another video very soon.